Hi everyone, it's Jane. I'm a watercolor artist that searches for her own voice. This year I only have one goal and that's to paint and draw as much as I can to figure out what makes me happy in a painting. After years of painting I still don't have a distinct style and my choices during painting process are not yet conscious enough and so I experiment a lot trying different approaches, different materials even to find some answers. This painting will be quite a wild exploration and it took me over five hours to finish which for a watercolor painting that's quite long. I will let you be the judge of whether the result works or not because I'm publishing even works that I don't like myself since it's Part of the journey and I want the message to be that it's a great idea to experiment even if the result is sometimes not what you hoped for. So let's see what happened over here. I usually don't create much elaborate drawings as a base for a painting, outlines and rough sketch is usually what I start from, but I wanted to explore what kind of impact will a more elaborate graphite drawing have on a painting and how it affects color and if it's easier for me to paint now that I basically solved the shading in the underdrawing. But this was not the only element for me to experiment with. This time around I went for smooth gradients instead of wildly flowing paint and overall more controlled approach. I soaked the entire paper and created a tilt to it so that the wash stays as smooth as it can be and used a shade of yellow, red and blue for the first layer. While the wash was still wet, I was trying to lift some of the paint where the highlights would be. After the first wash dried, I decided to apply masking fluid. This is the third one out of the six that I'm currently testing for a review and it's by Schminky. It's not my favorite so far. It was very thick and application was tricky and also too blue. A strong color of masking fluid is not ideal, but I will talk about that more in the review. I still have two more bottles to test. I painted these leafy shapes with the fluid and sadly I was feeling very creative that day and masked all the parts of the face that were receiving a lot more light than others, thinking that this graphic approach will look great and probably was watching too much Paulina Bright Instagram reels. She creates these frames around planes of the face and it works great for her, but for me this was very unfortunate as you will see in just a bit. And then I soaked the entire painting again and applied stronger color on top. So far so good, lots of fun and I was feeling particularly confident and important at this stage. Water and paint from the second wash wanted to stick around all of the masked areas and I was worried that blooms would form if I let them stay there, so I tried to get rid of most drops with the tip of the brush and then let the layer dry. This paper is very strong though and even two layers of masking tape didn't handle this amount of water and so I decided to retape it to a clean and dry board. Masking fluid was handling my manipulations very well. In fact, too well as I discovered when it was time to take it off the paper, it wasn't easy at all, masking fluid didn't roll together and I had to use a lot of pressure to get it off and also took me a while. This was so far the most impractical masking fluid that I ever worked with. So that was very messy, but Archie's handles these things very well. The only disadvantage of this paper is how color fades on it, forcing me to apply more layers than usual. There is definitely more than 50% difference in color between wet stage and dry stage. Ah, the unfortunate highlights. I wish I didn't mask them, but it's done. This was not the look I was going for and from this point on I only tried to save the painting somehow. Other than that, I don't think the face was badly painted and the leafy shapes, they looked nice and it would have gone completely different direction, maybe more gentle direction if I only didn't mask out those areas, but 
all that I can do now is to just learn from it. Yeah, if I was painting a clown, this might be the technique. I actually liked the process of painting this face and it was such a beautiful face too. I picked darker skin and freckles at the same time and the colors were just so beautifully warm. Even granulating Porter's pink that I included in this mix did not make a mess. I love the texture here. The purpose of these experiments is to find what I like in a painting and what feels mine. Some people call it art style, but that's not what I'm searching for. Art style sounds like a set of predefined rules on how to draw or paint and I'd like to change that in a painting every now and then. I would probably would get bored of anything that I'd start calling my style and rather I will need to start being conscious about certain aspects that make me enjoy painting process so much and then be happy at the end of it. I've experienced this absolute joy of painting something that I really loved from the bottom of my heart a couple of times and those paintings were always most successful with other people too. I always sold the original right away or had lots of offers if I did not want to sell a painting and I do have some of these personal pieces in my studio. Also, other people often commented on them in my studio or asked for prints but I never knew what it was exactly that made me enjoy the process so much. I always finished it much more quickly than everything else because I was very enthusiastic about that. And the end of it, I just loved the painting dearly. I am convinced that this is it and if I follow this passion and try to find connections and just figure out what is that like secret sauce that makes me feel connected to my own work, then I'll be a much better artist. So that's my goal right now. One way of figuring that out is to rule out everything that's not quite it. Lately I've made four paintings, one of them I'm absolutely in love with and three of them I did not enjoy so much and now I feel like I'm much closer to recognizing these aspects uh, than I was before and that's actually thanks to making all those paintings that did not work out for me. From this point on, I did all kinds of weird things to this poor painting, trying to stylize. First, I added a dark background and painted a dark wash to her neck. I wanted to do a tattoo using colored pencils and spend some time on it, only to repaint it again. I was even trying to thumbnail this and explore a couple of different stylizations, but didn't really enjoy any of the options very much. I had to come to a conclusion that stylizing artworks just isn't what I'm good at. When I saw the reference photo that I originally wanted to paint as my inspiration, there was that spark and I didn't really pause to think what the spark is all about and if I did and tried to explore that in a painting, I'm sure that it would have worked. Maybe these thoughts of mine don't make much sense to you and you'd rather hear about the paints or the technique and I do get excited about the paints and about the beautiful technique very often, but in my experience that's not quite what keeps you painting. I just have to look past these physical aspects of the process right now and follow the spark. I would love to know what keeps you creating, what gets you inspired and if you ever liked a piece of your own art so much that you wish to keep it and hang on your wall. Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to get your point of view and hear some of your experiences. The entire process of creating this painting will be available on my Patreon in Paint With Me tier alongside my other real-time tutorials that can be found over there and I want to thank all my patrons for their support because they are currently what allows me to create two videos every single week Thank you very much. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up maybe consider subscribing and I will see you in just a few days Bye! Thank you.